Next stop, Paris. We spend three days and nights here in this beautiful city, the capital of France. Arriving at the Gare de Lyon, it's always a very busy scene here at this major train station. A taxi takes us from the train station down through the busy streets of the city, heading towards our hotel for check-in. Along the way, we see many of the beautiful retail shop fronts of this city. It's really a wonderful place to spend your money or a great place just for window shopping and people watching. Driving along the busy Rue de Rivoli, this is really one of the main shopping streets in Paris. It's over a mile long. It's a straight road. It runs down all the way to the Louvre and down to the Tuileries Gardens. Of course, upon arrival at the hotel, the first thing we want to do is get out and take a walk. And fortunately, our hotel is located right in the middle of town. So there's a lot of things to see right away in the Leal area. More of the pedestrian zone. It's really a fun place here for just wandering in the evening. You're safe here, no problem whatsoever. Midnight, there's still tons of people out here. This is a spectacular building. It's the first postmodern building ever constructed. And well, nowadays we see all kinds of crazy looking buildings, don't we? It's called postmodernism. And this was the first. It's the Pompidou Center. It's a museum of contemporary art and it's open in the evening to about 9 p.m. Anybody interested in 20th century art, this is a must. There's two entire floors of contemporary and modern art. And there's also a library, a national library. There's theaters, there's restaurants, there's cafes. And look, it's like an inside out building. Isn't it spectacular? The pipes are on the outside instead of the wall. There is no exterior wall as such. You've got the glass panels, of course, and it's all air conditioned inside. It was built by Sir Richard Rogers from England and Renzo Piano from Italy, two of the great contemporary architects. Both of them still very active. Both have produced dozens of major structures since this was put up. This was their first major work in the mid 60s. This is the Stravinsky Fountain. And you see uh, just a whimsical, colorful spectacle, a kinetic sculpture and water fountain in a beautiful place surrounded by the Pompidou Center behind you and an old Gothic church in front of you. What a contrast. And to the left, some nice cafes. Called the Stravinsky Fountain because downstairs there's a, a Stravinsky library, the musician, the composer, uh, dedicated to him. It's a, a place for serious study of music. And then we enter the church of San Marie. This is a late Gothic church built in that flamboyant style. And we were very fortunate today to run into a chorus putting on a concert. These young French children were performing mostly for their parents probably, but we happened by. And so we spent 10 minutes listening in and what a delightful sound it is. The acoustics in San Marie are really ideal. The church is not too big and the shape is just right for creating a beautiful musical sound with a piano accompaniment. Just a couple of blocks away, we get to another one of the city's great monuments. Hotel de Ville. This is the city hall of Paris. You'll find it just between the Rue de Rivoli and the River Seine. Now it says hotel, but it, of course it's not a hotel. Uh, in Paris, there's a lot of um, mansions that are called hotel, but not a place to stay. From here, we walked over to one of the great buildings of Paris, Notre Dame Cathedral. It's really the prototype of Gothic cathedrals that were built all over Europe after Notre Dame. Um, there's probably 200 Gothic churches built during that Middle Ages that are similar. So it's really set the standard. It became the pattern. Uh, and yet no two Gothic cathedrals are identical. There was always the stonemasons involved in the work, um, very much like this uh, almost secret Masonic rituals of building it. Sometimes when you go inside Notre Dame, 
there's a performance happening and we were lucky this day to catch a beautiful chorus singing throughout our entire visit. One of the oldest buildings in town, it was first constructed from 1163 in the Gothic style. It's a big church, it's rather dark, so it's a little hard to see inside. You've gotta let your eyes get adjusted with its majestic stone roof and round glass windows. Inside, there's original Gothic wood carvings. These date back to the 12th century. From the back of Notre Dame, you get some beautiful views. This is a great vantage to see the back of the church because uh, you're looking at the flying arches. You see those Gothic flying arches that come out from the wall. You have a very clear view from this angle. And these are important because Notre Dame was the first church that had such an architectural feature. It was a very important engineering feature because with the flying buttress, it was able to support the wall with an exterior structure. And this meant that the wall itself no longer had to be fully a load-bearing wall, and it enabled them to put the stained glass into the walls. Previously to the Gothic, it was what's called the Byzantine, and they had very thick walls and just little tiny windows because they needed that stone support for the structure. With the Gothic, you have this dramatic breakthrough of the buttresses. These are external buttresses, and what it's doing is transferring the uh, lines of force from the wall to the ground. Now, without the buttresses, the walls would not fall down, they would fall out, they would collapse. The roof would be too heavy and they would collapse out and the whole building would fall down. It's got a heavy roof because it's a stone roof. This is another breakthrough of the Gothic. In the Byzantine, uh, it was either a wooden roof or it was a very small church that could have a stone roof, but it couldn't have a, a large crossing in the Byzantine. It couldn't be a large space. With the Gothic, they could open up the space, big room, high ceiling, stone ceiling, and of course, this is important for uh, fire prevention, especially. Churches are very vulnerable to burning with a wood roof. And just for the integrity, the structural integrity of the building to have that stone roof. And it's all made possible by the buttresses. And again, Notre Dame is the first church with the flying buttresses. By the way, this is not the first Gothic cathedral. It's the second Gothic cathedral. So this didn't actually create this form. The first Gothic cathedral is also in Paris and it's the church of St. Denis, Saint-Denis, of course. Right, he's the patron saint of Paris, St. Saint-Denis. And uh, that's located just a couple miles from here. We're not gonna go see that. Nobody, no tourists really ever go see it. But this is the most famous, and really it's the first of this classic Gothic style.